Hey everybody, it's Arv Tech Guy here, and today I wanted to talk to you about the Legal Mars uh, Pro 2. Before I purchased this, I was actually uh, looking into what I needed to get for it. So we'll get into all of that in a minute. But the first thing I wanted to show you is this thing has about 5.1 by 3.1 by 6.3 inch uh, build plate. So your your printing surface uh, is going to be about that big. The the biggest item you can print is about uh, around that size. This is this so far is the biggest thing that I've printed. This thing took up almost the whole build plate and it had to be printed at somewhat of an angle like this. Another thing that you're gonna, that I'm gonna get into on the slicing software is that um, I actually had to hollow out this piece because otherwise it would have taken up, it would have completely filled it in and that would have been a lot of money in resin. This probably would have been about a 10 to $15 piece just to print. As you can see, the back end got stuck on the build plate. This thing, these things are pretty awesome because they print with a lot of detail. So when you actually buy the Illegal Mars uh, 2, it comes with this flash drive and the 3D slicing software is in the flash drive. So you can install it onto your laptop or your computer. If you get the water washable resin, you're really not gonna need a washing station because all you have to do is take it to your faucet and rinse off the part after it's done printing. I do like the water washable because it's very easy to print with, it's very easy to clean and it's not as messy as uh, other resins. I, I do like printing with this. This is fun, but uh, it will shatter if I drop it on the floor as opposed to uh, printing with this $65 resin. This is $65 per kilogram and this is $35 per kilogram. This one is a flexible resin, clear resin. You're going to you're going to need a washing station and a curing station for something like this. So this resin is flexible. This one, I could drop it and it's still in one piece. But this is a $65 resin, $65 per kilogram. And this one is actually about 35 per kilogram. This particular washing station that I bought, it is a two in one. So it's a washing station and curing station. So it comes with this container here. It comes with a little uh, cage for washing. You put your build plate in here, it'll clean off the build plate and the part, and then you can take everything off and put your little curing plate on there and set it to cure. So I prefer the, the all-in-one washing station because I don't have a lot of space here to uh, for, for extra devices. So I decided to go with this one. So I will leave a link in the description on where you could get this. Uh, let's go to the computer and I'll show you guys exactly how to install and set everything up. All right, so when you guys plug in your flash drive, you're going to be uh, seeing this little slicing software uh, thing right here. So you're just going to want to click on that, open that up, and then you're going to see an option for uh, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows 64. I'm running Windows, uh, Windows software, so that's the one I'm going to be double clicking. Then you're going to see the software installation here, uh, Chitu Box. Just double click that, run it, install it, and uh, you should be good to go. Once you get all that set up, once you get all, all that set up, your software is going to open. All right, and the first thing you're going to want to do when you when your software opens up is go to settings, uh, pick your resin. So depending on your resin, if you're using water washable, eh, you could put your price here, which is about $35. I have mine already preset. So this is my uh, water washable. I should have probably labeled it that way. So uh, I got it set to a kilogram is about $35. And then my... Um, my $70 resin is, is $70 per kilogram. So this is important and I'll show you why later because it, it's going to help you uh, actually calculate how much you're going to be spending per print. And then you're going to want to go to your print settings. Okay, so as you can see here, this is a 20 second exposure for the more expensive $70 resin. It's because this one actually sticks to the build plate very well, a little too well if you go, if you uh, if your exposure time is too high, you're going to have trouble taking it off the build plate which I actually damaged the part taking it off the build plate because I was used to running the um, the water washable. So right here, water washable and, uh, and your more expensive resins are gonna make a huge difference. So this is the, the setting you're gonna wanna adjust. You're gonna wanna create two different profiles maybe for, um, for different types of resins. With water washable, I'm going with 60 seconds because I had a lot of water washable parts just fall off the build plate. These two where you resin and print are the most important parts you could mess with. Resin, you put your price per how many uh, kilograms and then uh, 
print is uh, the only thing you really have to mess with is the bottom exposure. Other than that, I really don't mess with anything else because the machine, it's already set to your machine. All right, so now we're going to pull up a part. This can be one of the more expensive parts to print, so I'm going to set this, this one up. I'm going to open up the skull. There it is. And as, as you can see, like uh, it's over the build plate, so we're going to change it. We're going to scale it to fit. And then because of the support material that you're going to need, I shrink it down a little bit more than scaled to fit. So the last one that I printed actually got stuck to the build plate. So I'm probably going to lift this up off the build plate. Actually, before we go into any of the support material, let me show you guys how to hollow this out. It's going to be this little button up here. You just uh, scroll your, your mouse over it and it'll say hollow. I choose two millimeters thickness to make the part a little bit stronger um, just because that's what I prefer but I think it's normally set to 1.2 millimeters uh, wall thickness so now you click um, hollow out let me see what type of resin I'm gonna actually set this up with the profile with this profile so we're going to go with the $70 resin. Because I have not set this up yet for this type of resin. All right, now let's go to uh, support material. We're going to take this off the build plate a little bit. Hopefully I don't regret this. I find that 2.5 millimeters off the build plate, it gives it enough space for uh, the support material to develop underneath. That's why I go with 2.5 millimeters off the build plate. I learned that with uh, my little G.I. Joe accessory that I that I uh, decided to print or that I released on Thingiverse. So now that we got that all set up, we're just gonna click all and there we go. It automatically set up all of our medium size uh, support material. I'm just gonna go around it and uh, make sure that everything is the way that I like it. Cause if we do have any overhang, I really don't want this part to mess up especially since I am going to be spending uh, kind of a lot of money on just printing this. There we go. The, the back of the skull is off the build plate. That part that I showed you earlier, that piece actually got stuck to the build plate. So when I, when I went to take it off the build plate or when I went to take off the support material, it actually snapped off with the, with the bottom raft. It actually looks pretty good to me. I don't think I have to add anything. So now that that's all done, I'm going to slice it and we're going to see exactly how much this is going to cost to print. Now again, this is the uh, $70 resin. I will try a, a cheaper flexible resin. I am planning on getting that later on. And we'll see how that one prints. Let's see how this goes. All right, so it's gonna take three hours and 27 minutes. One thing I do like about this resin printer is it, it takes about half the time to print as a regular 3D printer. If I, was about, if I was gonna print a skull this size on a regular 3D printer, it would have taken about probably about six hours or seven hours to print. So as you can see here, since we hollowed it out and everything, this is going to cost three dollars and seventy seven cents um, to print this. Now, again, that's just uh, accounting for the, the price of the resin. So now we're going to save it. And normally if you save a regular 3D print for a regular 3D printer, it's G code. But since we're um, saving to the illegal Mars, I still don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sure I'm butchering that name, but uh, <laughs> You guys will let me know in the comments i'm sure of it so we're gonna go into uh 65 dollar resin and then we're gonna we're gonna save it as a, a ctb file so when you first set up your printer it's gonna give you that option on what type of file to to, to save as and ctb is uh the the printable file so if it doesn't look like this if it doesn't have that blue uh almost like cross look on it it's not going to print so we're going to save the skull and there we go it should be ready to print land in a few minutes this is a lot of detail in the skull uh one of the things i have noticed between printing with a 65 dollar resin and printing with the uh, the 35 dollar water washable resin is i do have a lot less failed prints with the 65 dollar resin there there was maybe a couple of little issues in one of my prints but it's not a complete failure uh, in the print. Like I have got a lot of failed prints with the water washable. That that that's the main issue that I'm having with that one. So it's a, it's a lot like other 3D slicers. It's just um, a little bit of a learning curve because you are printing upside down, and you're trying to make sure that the parts don't fall like with gravity. That's the only thing that you're trying to take into consideration when you're setting up your support and all that other stuff. 
but other than that, it's pretty similar to uh, just regular 3D printing. I don't know if you guys are used to that or not, or if you guys are just going head first directly into resin printing. You got your scale, you got your uh, you got your flip here, or you rotate, and you got your move part, so you can move the part uh, back and forth, or you can adjust it with numbers here. We're gonna go back to zero, zero. All right, everybody, so here's a few things that I printed with my resin printer. Now, he is water washable. This one's flexible. Here's Octo Finkelstein. And here is the little G.I. Joe accessory that I designed. Let me see if I could get it to focus on that. There you go. This, this part will be available on Thingiverse. It's actually available right now. I'll leave a link in the description. Yeah, you guys can go follow me on Thingiverse as well. I think it's RF Tech. I got to change it to RF Tech Guy, but I'll leave a link in the description. This is a generic G.I. Joe, uh, 3.75 inch figure, I think, 118 scale. If you guys do need me to, I will design it for a six inch figure as well. I could just put it up there. Uh, it's pretty easy to change the size, but I'll probably uh, leave it up so there's no issues. This is a speed loader hopper I I uh, built. This is about as as uh, this is about as tall as the build plate will print. And this is the flexible sixty-five dollar resin. So this piece itself costed about seven dollars to print, but it doesn't really seem like it's a usable part because it's a little too flexible for um, holding paintballs. This lid, on the other hand, this was about a dollar something to print, and it only took about an hour. This was a pretty good print, and it's flexible, so it doesn't damage the lip. This part is available on Thingiverse as well. This hopper and lid, this is for a speed loader for MagFed TMC uh, Tipman paintball. But yeah, that's about all the time I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.